Welcome to the underground, Australia's home of rap, metal, and alternative music. Well, there is a big wave of new metal madness heading our way next month. Not too far away at all. We have Mudvayne and Cold Chamber heading our way. And to tell us more about it, the one and only Des Fafara from Cold Chamber. Des, how are you, man? How you doing, man? Thanks for having me on. And yeah, we are indeed coming down. Some of these shows are near close to sell out right now. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You actually, like I said, before we started recording, you actually caught me packing today for the trip. Yeah, you are a very organized man. I like to hear that. And like you said, yeah, a couple of shows sold out already or very close to being sold out. So if you're sleeping on those tickets, be sure to pick them up. Now, Des, you've been here a couple of times already, man. What is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Australia? I have a great time when I come down. I got really good friends down there that I can't wait to see. I'm actually coming down early. For Devil Driver, my other band, Australia is just a stronghold for us, man. We know we can come down and and there's packed crowds that will come out. But Coal Chamber, for sure, there's just been a, a massive resurgence. I mean, last time we were down was 2012. So this is gonna be, this is warranted, right? Like we need to come down, we need to play some shows. And there's been a lot of talk in the camp about this tour. We went out with Mudvayne this summer in big amphitheaters and it was a great time. All the crews got along, the bands got along. There was not one bit of drama, which is awesome. And just decided to put this gig together. And so yeah, getting ready to come down and we're all excited. Yeah, that's amazing right there, Des. In 2012, is that when you toured with Fear Factory? Cause I, I have caught Devil Driver before and I reckon I saw you and Fear Factory back in the day i think i think i mean i've known dino for ever right since day one i mean he was at the first coal chamber show so wow. i've known him for a very long time yeah yeah and it's good to see him out doing his thing now too you know yeah that's really cool right there man so i wanted to ask you because this is like a big time sort of almost nostalgic thing with coal chamber heading back out here i remember having the coal chamber posters on my wall i'm excited that you guys are back together are you a big nostalgic type guy des I think everything comes around, right? Life is cyclical. I kind of use the analogy because I've got four sisters and I always heard my mom like say, hey, don't don't throw those boots away or that jacket away. Like styles come around, right? And it's really the same thing with music. And I think that's what's happening now. I mean, look, for a very long time and still some of the biggest bands out have been from the new metal genre. I mean, Korn, like down the line. I mean, I can you know name, name a handful of them. And I noticed it when we did our tour and we had meet and greets in the, in the summer time when we went out with Mudvayne that there was a lot of kids and when I say kids obviously I'm not in my 20s right but I'm I'm seeing 18 19 22 year old kids come you know Cole Chamber is my favorite band so it's yes I you know they find it through their brother they find it through their father they find it through TikTok stuff like this right and there's within the United States at this moment right now there's a huge resurgence of new metal and a lot of new metal bands coming out that are really really killer I mean I think we have to remember right the term term new metal was at one point an ugly word but the reason why they dubbed it new metal is because it was exactly that right after yeah. poison and and all of this kind of stuff it kind of literally killed LA where where I'm from there was a form of music that started in and around Orange County in LA that just compiled so many different kinds of styles and so many different kinds of art that it was new right and i think mm. You know, whereas Cold Chamber had our own thing, I think everybody kind of had their own thing within that scene, and we are seeing a tremendous resurgence of interest in the band, and it's it's fantastic to see. Yeah, I love that right there, and it's it's definitely a different time for music too, because I remember back in the day you'd be discovering music through like your your magazines and that sort of stuff. You'd almost be seeing the, you know, what the bands look like and that sort of thing before you even heard it. Then you had to chase down the CDs and you know check out the music like that. Now it's streaming and that sort of thing what do you think is better des are you a fan of the streaming side of things or do you like that old school buy cds type style yeah you know i'm kind of a i'm kind of not a throwback guy right like i believe in technology and where it goes it goes and if it exposes you to other people uh, you know to a greater amount of people then it's a good thing of course you go back to well if you're streaming you're not really making the money i mean that is just a, a can of worms you don't even open right you just you think to yourself okay i've got you know whatever it is you know some bands you know a billion streams i mean i saw something with snoop dogg actually talking about that where like you know he has a billion streams and makes you know whatever 
barely any money, basically. And it is what it is, right? I don't think you can go backwards in life, right? When you look at yourself in the mirror and you're 35, do you say to yourself, man, I wish I could go back in my 20s? Or how about this? Not I wish I could, but can you? In fact, you cannot. No. So <laughs> the, genie is, the genie is out of the bottle with technology, and I think you embrace it. You know, look, it's given rise to some really great art. The fact that you don't need a label anymore to break your band. You can go on yeah. TikTok, break your band, and then chart your own course. I think that is viably beautiful for art. And so, yeah, I kind of I kind of look at it as, as being something that you embrace and you move forward with it because you certainly cannot turn the time back on the clock. Yeah, excellent way to look at it too. And, and you're 100% right. Like anyone can break out now, whereas back in the day, definitely not. And you were talking about it before that there's a whole bunch of sort of the resurgence of that new metal scene. What, what are your sort of views on today's music, Des? Is, is there any bands coming through that you're loving the, the sound of? I oh, mean, there's a lot of bands. I'm, I'm, first of all, I listen to everything, right? So yep. uh, let me give you a for instance today, right? I've been in my office. Well, I get up at 5 a.m. I watch the sunrise every morning. I do a bit of yoga, some meditation with the wife. I And then I run immediately. I run four miles. Then I get right into the office. On the treadmill, we were listening to Black Flag, Black Sabbath, Sex Pistols, like almost a punk rock mix, but it would throw in Motorhead and Black Sabbath once in a while, stuff like that, right? And then we're in here this afternoon, kind of getting ready for these calls. My wife is listening to like tiki music, right? Like, so I listen to everything. I'm, you know, went to bed last night listening to Susie and the Banshees, Love and Rockets, The Cure. Like my love for music is all over the place. I mean, mm. I'm just not this guy where you're going to get in my car and, and just hear metal, right? And don't get me wrong, though, if I want to listen to metal, I listen to some real heavy shit, maybe <laughs> stuff that people haven't even heard, you know, Iron Monkey, like I go deep with it and I like I like it when it's heavy, I'd like it, right? I can remember I was in the car with one of my kids and he was playing something and I was like, who is this? And they're like, Lorna Shore. And I was like, this shit is badass. It was heavy yeah. as fuck, right? So I listen to everything, right? And I tend to keep myself way even more in the loop than most artists because I, I listen to a lot of underground stuff before it even hits and I, I don't want to lose that as an artist. I was that before I got signed in 1993 and I, I am that now, you know, where I used to hunt down vinyl and hunt down tapes and tape trade with people and shit like that. I do the same thing, but it's on the internet now. I just go scour for new cool shit and I, and I think, you know, again, that's embracing technology to kind of further art and so, so there you go. So that's my my notion on it man that's that's amazing right there i love it des and i love that the, you're hopping up at 5 a.m in the morning and really putting in work you're talking about you've got like a a bunch of companies and things on the go i did want to talk about sun cold i'll get to that a little bit later but first off i wanted to know what's sort of the wildest thing that's happened in your career des I can't. I don't even know where to go with that, right? Like, first of all, there's an autobiography coming out either at the end of this year or quarter one next year. It's already done. It's edited. It's called Cold Chamber, The Loco Years, right? Obviously. And it paints a lot of pictures of a lot of scenarios I've been in, right? But I think, you know, traveling the world with Pantera for years and years and years when they were together as a whole, right? Doing soccer stadiums with Black Sabbath, working yeah. with Ozzy uh, on Shock the Monkey, doing all the Ozfest that we did, getting the first gold record, having fights on a bus and breaking up. Like, I mean, these are all things that add to your life in some way or another. They may subtract and take away at the moment, but they add to who you are as a person and your character. And I've certainly had up and downs within art but i i feel incredibly blessed that you know since 92 93 that's that's all i've done in my life is is art and i'm grateful every day that people still are are interested and follow the musical career you know so i, I try to do my best with everything i actually have 110 percent tattooed on my knuckles because it's a running joke with my family that i don't do anything unless it's 110 percent oh man that's a that's an amazing work ethic right there and, and awesome. yeah and i mean I, that's part and that's par and course for like why i get up in the morning right so look my job on a tour bus is literally to get to bed before the sun comes up so if i'm not on tour my job is to get up and witness the sunrise and witness the sun go down and be grateful as it rises and grateful as it goes down and that will even further your work ethic if you wake up a grateful human being you know yeah absolutely love that right there and looking forward to this book too man that'd be crazy you want to know the way i discovered you des was back in the day with that icp sharon osborne sort of battle how did that 
that affect your career? Well, I mean, you pull up to a gig, you make a deal with a band, which by the way, I, I, I run into those guys. We're cool, right? <laughs> Let's just say that, right? And that this was 25 years ago, but you know, you pull up to a gig and you make a, a deal to co-headline and that you're going to be able to bring production and stuff. And then we arrive with all of our production and they say, you can't have your production. And then your manager, who at the time is a very strong presence in the industry, Sharon Osborne, yeah. says, get back in your bus and leave, right? Like, this is not how we're starting this tour. And and then it fights ensued, right? People ended up on Howard Stern and this and this. And, and really, honestly, I sat back in a hotel at that point in New York going, this is where the career is at. Like, this <laughs> is what's happening. Like, we just got a gold record. We're one of the biggest things in the United States at this point, but this is where it's at. Like, we're literally arguing with clowns on the radio. Like, I'm not literally clowns, right? So, and, and not as people, right? Like, they're dressed as clowns. That's their persona. And I just said to myself, fuck, <laughs> this is not how it's going to go. That instance that you just asked about literally made me who I am today as far as privacy goes. From then on, I was like, I don't hang out on tour. I don't go to after show parties. I don't go to the parties in Hollywood that I'm invited to. I don't go to the Grammy Award parties that I'm invited to. I don't, I don't hang out. I hang out with my family and my kids, right? And I make dinner for the family and I stay blue collar, which is how I was raised. And don't go to to that other place that a lot of a lot of artists go to, right? Where it's like a bit an ego headspace thing, right? Yeah. So to go into that question, you know, I gotta tell you how that works. <laughs> what happened there and then tell you how you come out of that. And I came out of that like a more armored up artist for sure. And I just said, okay, never again in my career will I allow shenanigans, I should say, right, to happen around who I am and my persona. And and it's worked and it's worked. And since then I've run into those dudes and that whole fight is kind of legendary in the new metal community, but it, you know, it is what it is, you know. That's wild too, that it's like 25 years ago, like you're saying it and it affected you that much in this sense to this day that said why you don't go out and do things anymore like that no and i heard violent jay's got some stuff going on uh, health wise and stuff so I, I wish him the best you know of him or any of his uh, followers hear this i mean it is what it is over over the course of time you may in life have battles right mm -hmm. it's the fact do you did you win and if you, and if there was no clear win if everybody lost did you come out a better person did you come out more armored did you come out more knowledgeable did you come out smart out of that or did you get dumb and you went and did it again right i learned i learned from my mistakes and my lessons and actually that wasn't any of my mistake you know i just showed up with production ready to do a show but what i did do is go okay i'll never let a fiasco surround my career ever again and it made me very very private it may have hurt my career i mean i may have been even a a more massive let's say artist if I was more outgoing, but I, I just became extremely private after that one event. Yeah, that's crazy right there. And you've held yourself so well, which leads me into my next question, Des. I was, I was wondering, okay, so you're talking, you've got like a, a bunch of sort of projects on the go, I guess. What would you be doing if it wasn't for music? I know your son's a surfer, is that right? And, and you've got Sun Cult, you're a part of that as a brand, but then you said there's a, a bunch of other things as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm blessed. I've got three sons, right? Each one doing their own thing and, and doing a great job of it. My my youngest actually has his, he's one song away from having his debut record done. Oh. And that will be coming out hopefully quarter one next, quarter two next year. Uh, we're working on his deal now. My middle son actually works with me and runs Sun Cult. So Sun Cult started on the beach with myself, my wife, and my kids. I made a couple surfboards. I made some shirts that said Sun Cult and, and I was riding. And then Randy from Lamacoon, God actually heard that I surfed and we'd all we've been friends but not really close and he heard that I surfed and he came out stayed with the family we became really tight he became part of it but yeah we're blessed right now to be in an awful lot of zoomies stores and you can go to zoomies online and pick us up or if you've got a zoomies in your mall we're actually testing online at Tilly's and we're in Tilly stores right now which is fantastic yeah. so you think of this small thing that your family starts with a t-shirt people are walking by hey where'd you get the shirt you know hey where'd you get the board and then that forms into a company that's getting, you know, four or five, six buys, large buys a year. It's incredible. We're very hard workers at it. We're very diligent at what we do. And the growth has been happening very slowly and underground, which is which is amazing. We, you know, we're not using millions of dollars to pop it, right? We're kind of letting it trickle in and feed the culture, which it's doing. So yeah, go check it out. Just, just amazing. And you said your son's close to signing a record deal. Like, I'm not familiar with that. Can you tell me more? Is he like a, a metal guy? Or, or what are we talking here? 
Yeah, yeah, he's metal. You can you can check him out on Instagram at Simon Fafara, and he's not private. I I am, and you can check <laughs> out what he's got. He's got some he's got some clips. He's extremely heavy. He's got a voice a lot like me, but even heavier, and he can sing clean a lot better than I can as well. He actually went on tour with me the whole last Devil Driver run and sound checked for me. He was doing videography and stuff out there for us too. He's an incredible editor and videographer as well. He's a very talented kid, but he was out there sound checking for me. I mean, if you close your eyes, it sounds like I'm up there. So yeah. he's going to carry on the tradition, you know, when I put it to bed, right? Which isn't going to be anytime soon because I'm ready to go still, <laughs> you know? I'm glad to hear that right there, man. And I want to talk a little bit of out there facts about you, Des. I was reading that, that your dad and your uncle were a part of Leave It to Beaver. Now that, that blew my mind. Is there anything more crazy like that, like out there facts that might surprise people listening to this to hear about yeah, you? Yeah, that's crazy, right? Like, I, so I wasn't raised with my father. And as soon as I really got to know him in my teenage years, you know, I got to know that, yeah, he was his IMDb Tiger Fafara is, is huge. I mean, the amount of artists he's worked with from John Wayne to I mean it's it's just insane the amount of photos he has with stars at his house but him and my uncle Stanley were Whitey and Tui on Leave it to Beaver which is <laughs> literally the most legend i mean in the united states at least it's the most legendary show from that era right from that 50s kind of Definitely. you know clean era you know and he's he's been on a lot of stuff a lot of tv shows and stuff and a crazy story when i moved to the house that i'm living in now about 12 13 14 years ago I found out that the guy had kind of lost touch with him for about two, three, four years. I had found out now that he lived five miles from me. So <laughs> it was That's crazy. Yeah, so, which is really crazy because I moved like three hours away from where I was and then, and then there he was. So yeah, it, show business, I guess, kind of runs in the family. You have a Des Fafara fun fact. Yes, What's, your mother back in the 70s. Oh yeah, my mom. Yeah, my mom in the 70s. So I was raised in Studio City, Panorama City, which is like where a lot of actors and actresses lived back in the day in the 60s and the 70s, right? So in the early 70s, my mom was friends with Linda Carter, Wonder Woman, and she actually used to babysit me. Wonder Woman babysat you. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, we're living in a small apartment at the time or whatever, you know what I mean? But my, yeah, she used to come over and babysit me when I was like, you know, whatever, four or five years old. So, wow. Crazy, that is crazy. Amazing right there, Des. Here's what I say about life, man. Like, how old are you right now? I am 42. 42. All right. You're relatively young. So just keep going and don't look back. When people ask you questions to look back or you're doing an autobiography or doing something like that, look back. Otherwise, don't look back, right? You have some people will say, hey, if you don't know where you come from, you're not going to know where you're going. That is wrong. That is fucking false completely. Put blinders on, move forward in life, and until you're literally in the rocking chair and done, don't take time to take a look back. I think that's that's how you live in the moment and how you really enjoy life. And that's where I've been. So until I get asked questions like this, I don't really think about it. You know, like right now I'm thinking about, you know, in about a half an hour, I'm gonna grab my skateboard. I got a friend coming over and we're actually gonna go boarding, right? And then go charge this hill out in front of my house. There's a huge hill and they like to come over here and charge it. So. That's what I'm thinking about. I'm already thinking about the future. So you need to be doing the same thing. Yeah, just look forward. Very insightful interview. Much, much appreciated. That's some great advice right there, Des. Now, before I let you go, man, can you give us just a bit of an update on, on where you're at with new music, that type of thing for both Cold Chamber and Devil Driver? What's the sort of status on those right now? You know, I can't speak on either, to be honest with you. All yeah. I can say is keep keep your ears to the ground when it comes to Devil Driver and really keep your ears to the ground when it comes to Cold Chamber over the next, let's say, two months. Oh, Because there there's going to be some fiery announcements in both camps. What I'm getting ready to do now is ramp it up for the next five years so hard that, <laughs> yeah, you'll see. I'm going to shake some, some ground, you know. I'm going to shake, uh, shake some ground. So just keep a, keep a weathered eye. Oh, man. Very much looking forward to it. Appreciate that. So in the next couple of months, definitely. And, man, it sounds like you're just such a go-getter, and I love it. And I've just seen, too, that it's been announced as meet and greets for the Australian shows, and you guys are cool enough to be donating money to Camp Quality for this, which really shows a sign of your character, which is amazing. 
thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah. Look, if you already have a ticket or if you don't grab a ticket, but if you can come to the VIP, know that partial uh, proceeds goes to the camp. And, you know, for those of you who know me, cool. For those of you who don't know my family, I've been with my wife, you know, almost 27 years. She's yes, my sir. best friend in my rock and she's been through cancer twice. So you can't really come. There's some places you go to and you, you do meet and greets or what have you, right? But there's others you go to and you want to give back. And Australia is definitely that. And so we can't wait to, to do good for these kids, right? So first of all, having cancer is the worst, but then again, you're, you're a child. It's like, no. So this lends them a little reprieve, gets them able to go to camp and, you know, be out in the sunlight for a minute and you know, forget about what they're going through maybe for a second and be with other kids who are going through what they're going through as well. So, you know, we're real proud that we could announce that and we just announced it. So yeah. good, good, good on you for getting the word out. <laughs> but I, I'm a Freemason and I got into Freemasonry because I was doing a lot of charity work undercover. It's just not something that I tend to advertise. I mean, even right now, it's uh, unusual for me to discuss it, but it's why I got into uh, masonry is to learn how to further my charity work and stuff. So I, I just believe in coming down and doing good. And, you know, when I leave, I can have a good heart and the people can have a good heart about us coming down. Yeah, I love that right there. There's just cannot say enough good things about that. We uh, lost a friend to cancer. So I absolutely love the fact that, that you're going out there and making a huge difference. So if you're listening, be sure to pick up one of those VIPs. Get to meet Des in person as well as the rest of the crew and check these guys out. It is Cole Chamber heading our way with Mudvayne next month. Not too far away at all. Playing on the 14th in Brisbane, the 16th in Sydney, the 17th in Melbourne, the 19th in Adelaide and wrapping things up in Perth on the 21st. You can grab your tickets through the phoenix.au. Des, very much appreciate you taking time out to talk to me, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Can't wait to come down. If I have any off days, I'm looking forward to trying to get in the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds like it. And skating as well. I didn't know you were a skater. I knew, I knew about the surfing, but not the skating. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, brother. Yeah, I love skating. So thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And, you know, we'll see you guys real soon. This has been another presentation from the Grey Wolf Entertainment Network. GreyWolfEntertainment.net.